So guys, I know this video likely isn't going to get that much traffic because we're talking about a guy who isn't as well known across the league and in my opinion, he's one of the more underrated players, not only on the Bulls, but the league as a whole. But I think we would be remiss if for a Bulls channel to not have a dedicated video about Thaddeus Young. So feel free to drop a like if you enjoy the video, which I normally don't request, but again, this won't get many views. So let's try and give Thaddeus his respect for what he's done for the Bulls this season and get recognized for it. So what's going on everyone? You are listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Guys, I honestly can't think of anyone who has been more impactful to this Bulls roster outside of Levine in terms of contributing to the overall success of the team. I mean, we saw that in Saturday's game against the Kings towards the end of the game where the Bulls, the Bulls stumbled a bit and let the Kings close the gap in their lead and I remember thinking why isn't Thaddeus in the game right now and as Donovan brought him into the game with about a minute and a half left to go the flow and ease of the offense right away shifted the team calmed down a bit and when you know it Thaddeus scores on his first possession in the game and the Bulls didn't look back and went on to win we also saw Thaddeus be the same driving force in the five minutes of overtime against the Pacers game that led to a win now, it was around this time last season, shortly before the league was suspended due to the pandemic, where I thought, man, yet again, what an absolute terrible signing by Garpax, bringing in a 31-year-old on a three-year, $43.6 million contract. And guys, it's clearly past his prime, not effective on either end of the floor. And on top of that, you bring him in for his veteran leadership and he can't even motivate these guys. And the whole time I'm thinking, how on earth are the Bulls going to be able to move this guy before his contract ends? Because clearly we can't hang on to him for the whole deal. But of course, I should have known the Bulls were being coached by Jim Boylan, a man who was so incredibly incompetent in terms of playing to a player's strengths and utilizing them effectively. It's no wonder why Thaddeus expressed how unhappy he was with the role he was in last season. And initially, I just thought, you know, he was complaining and using that as an excuse for just not being the same player anymore. Then Thaddeus comes into this season and completely does a 180 under Billy Donovan. But before I get into it, comparing his most recent seasons with the Bulls, what I think is important to note is how Thaddeus's game has aged so well and how much he has adapted his play as he's gotten older. I'll show some of his numbers in a little bit, but Thaddeus is putting up some of the best numbers of his entire career at the age of 32 in terms of rebounds, assists, shooting percentage, defensive efficiency, his highest overall player efficiency rating. It's incredible to me that he's having one of the best years of his career in his 14th season in the league. Uh, Thaddeus has been through quite a journey in his career in the league. You know, Now, unlike Garrett Temple, who I made a video about you know, his struggles and the rise to the NBA, but as opposed to what Temple went through, uh, Thaddeus was actually very highly recruited coming out of high school. He was the number six overall recruit in 2006 class, played one season in Georgia Tech, and was selected in the lottery at 12th overall to the Sixers in the 2007 draft, just at the age of 19. There were really high expectations of Thaddeus going into college and entering the league, and despite him having a very solid career, he never made an all-star game or an all-NBA team nor any other major awards with the exception of making the all-rookie team. But despite being the number six recruit out of high school, not really turning into any kind of star that maybe some had predicted that he would be, uh, Thaddeus went on to have some great seasons for the Sixers and being a solid scorer and defensive stopper who was very versatile in playing the three, four, or even and five. His last season in Philly, he ended up averaging just short of 18 points per game, six rebounds, and nearly leading the league in steals at 2.1 per game. Uh, Thaddeus bounced around for a bit from various teams, uh, and, you know, playing with the Minnesota Timberwolves, Brooklyn, and then the Indiana Pacers before coming to Chicago. Uh, Thaddeus really started establishing himself as a key role player on all of these rosters uh, who could give him some scoring when needed and defensive intensity on a nightly basis. So when the Bulls signed him to a deal, I mean, based on what I knew 
of Thaddeus Young and seeing him play, mainly in his days with the Sixers, I thought, okay, I can get behind this signing, although it was a little bit of a larger contract than I thought. He was probably worth it his age, but I could get behind it because the Bulls were such a young team and they were really going to need some experienced veterans to mentor the young guys. And then as I mentioned, that ended up not being the case at all and borderline on being one of the Bulls' worst signings in recent years. But that was then, let's talk about now, because there could even be an argument that Thaddeus Young is the Bulls' second best player as of right now on this team, especially with Markinen being out. The most noteworthy statistic is that Thaddeus actually leads the entire team in box plus minus. That's even more so than Levine, meaning the Bulls are able to score more when he's on the court and perform better when he's on the court rather than when he's off of it. Now, I know that that stat can be a bit flawed because a lot of it depends on how many minutes a given player plays in a game, and that can skew the numbers. But Thaddeus has been averaging over 25 minutes per game this season, so it's not like he's playing less than 10 minutes on the court. Um, it, it is a bit more substantial than that. Now, I mentioned, you know, he's putting up some of the best numbers of his career as a whole. But let's look at the difference in terms of how he's performing this year compared to last under Jim Boylan. Thaddeus had, you know, he's greatly improved in terms of his shooting percentage and scoring. Uh, ignore his three point percentage since, you know, Thaddeus Young has never really uh, been much of a three point shooter as, as it is, but his three point shot has completely fallen off uh, as far as this season goes. He's improved his rebounding, but I think the most important statistic is his passing, jumping from 1.8 assists per game to 4.3. Mind you, those are the best assist numbers of his entire career, and far and away for that matter. The closest he even came to that was when he averaged 2.8 assists uh, a few seasons back when he was playing for the Timberwolves, which he played alongside Zach Levine in his rookie season. And I think that's really been the key thing for me about Thaddeus Young this season. His playmaking, his IQ on offense, and really being a leader in Donovan's system that thrives on ball and player movement, which is something that's incredibly needed in a system like Donovan's. You need playmakers, you need veterans who have been around for a while and have the experience to possess that court vision and teaching and mentoring young guys through it. Very similar to how we saw Chris Paul thrive in Billy Donovan's system um, when he was playing with OKC. Uh, and being that experienced leader with impeccable court vision and ability to make plays for the younger guys. Now, I'm not likening Thaddeus to Chris Paul. No, Chris Paul is a multiple all-star, multiple all-NBA player, a future Hall of Famer. I'm just saying that, like Chris Paul, Thaddeus has thrived in a system that is playing to his strengths. Strengths that have probably never really been realized throughout his whole career. And I think part of that is that Thaddeus, you know, having adapted and, adja and adjusted his game to becoming more of a playmaker for the younger talent around him and a guy that can be counted on when teams start to struggle, especially in late game situations. So I guess the point I'm trying to make in all of this is that I was completely wrong about Thaddeus Young last season. And you can never rush to judgment on a player who isn't being used properly or doesn't fit a given system, especially when you're playing for Jim Boylan. I honestly think Thaddeus is the Bulls' most underrated player. I believe he has been the Bulls' most improved player so far this season. Their sixth man, and you could even argue that he's been their best defensive player as well. So in a way, this is almost like in apology video to Thaddeus Young because I'm sure I was not the only Bulls fan who was hating on him a lot last season. He deserves his respect and credit where it's due from all Bulls fans. Anyway, that's all I've got for now, guys. The Bulls will be taking on the Rockets in Houston tonight. I'll have a live game chat on the channel as well as the Discord, so be sure to check those out if you're interested. As always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan and you enjoy daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.